Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant, and welcome back to the channel. Today is the big day, Argentina versus France World Cup Final. The last and final upgrades to Path to Glory cards are at stake today, and of course, the showdown upgrades that everybody is so interested in and looking forward to today on this game. It all comes down to today's World Cup Final. So I want to take a look at these Path to Glory cards today, take a look at how I think the World Cup Final might impact the market a little bit as people end watching the game and get on to FIFA afterwards. But with Sunday content today, could EA deliver a nice day or is it going to be a bit of a slower one? But regardless, I think we can also take a look at one aspect of the market right now that looks prime for an investment. And we're going to be looking forward to the content in the next two or three days to hopefully see that investment rise the usual weekend of SBC fodder stocking in the club is upon us so we're going to take a look at that and more in today's video if you're excited for it hit the thumbs up subscribe if you're new let's talk about the big game right because we've got this showdown we've got the final four path to glory cards at stake now the biggest thing that EA have to do today is upgrade the cards quickly they need to upgrade the cards whoever wins whether it's Argentina or France Correa Upamecano they need to upgrade these cards pronto as fast as possible right i hope they have like a button that you just have to press and make the upgrades go live because if the upgrades take forever to get pushed into the game then it's going to be pain right and i'll be honest ea has been doing really well recently with these upgrades i know croatia won yesterday um and the game has been over for you know half of a day or three quarters of a day now or is it just not upgraded yet as i'm recording this video but as long as they get these showdown cards upgraded within like a, a day 24 hours if they can do it in less than that that'd be absolutely fantastic but the faster that ea can upgrade these cards will definitely aid into the hype of the winning team today now let's talk about path to glories because i know some of you guys still might have some of these cards these cards first of all are going to be getting upgraded on monday it might be monday at midnight it might be monday at 6 p.m EA has been inconsistent with these upgrade times, but Monday is a day where we should expect to see the third and final plus one overall and adding three traits to the two cards from the winning nation. Now, there's going to be price fluctuation on these cards today, right? Even as of right now, Griezmann was 1.27 for most of the day yesterday. He was just down to 1.15. He's back up a little bit to 1.2. I think what you're seeing there is people that are trying to get out of the card before the game starts and so that they're kind of averting the risk, right? They're trying to get out because they don't want to risk and, and see and, you know, potentially lose coins if uh, France don't end up winning today. I think you're going to see some of that on the market today because people like to sell before the game just to guarantee their profit from maybe where they bought the card in the past. And that's not, you know, that's kind of a smart idea, to be honest. If you don't want to risk it, sell before the game today. But honestly, what you see is a lot of people start selling before the game, just like that Griezmann we saw, a bit of a price drop off. The people keep panic selling, they undercut. So if you can, if you see a bunch of panic selling on a card like a Griezmann or a Romero, maybe it's like three, four hours before the game you might be better off waiting right until kickoff and until game time because what we've seen before is there'll be a sell-off there'll be sell-off they'll drop 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 and then they'll bounce right back up right before the game starts because then the panic selling ends and people are ready to watch the game and you might be able to sell for a little bit of a better price that's just kind of something i'd watch out for today and if you really want to risk it if you think france or argentina are going to score first whatever side you think is going to go through if you want to risk it again this is very risky but whoever scores or whoever is winning in the game those prices are definitely going to continue to rise like whoever scores first usually you see the biggest spike on so watch out for that if you want to risk it today but honestly with the path to glories I don't think I would hold too long after the game because I really feel like for a lot of these guys, today is the culmination. Even though the upgrades are tomorrow, people that have been investing in these cards and specifically the ones that are more supplied like Griezmann, and Romero, but Romero specifically is one I'd be a little bit worried about. This card to me is not worth 290,000 coins, especially with all the other Prem center backs that we have. If they win today, yes, this goes to an 89. Yes, it gets a stat upgrade. Yes, he's five star, five star, which makes him very unique. But just that price for this card with all the other great Premier League center backs that are on the game. You know, that to me is not, I guess, in the price range of where I think he should be. I think the live card aspect here is helping his price be a little more expensive than it should be. So just be very careful with those Path to Glories. There will be a lot of fluctuation on those today. 
as you guys know. But again, hopefully EA get those upgrades done really quick. Now, after the game, regardless today, whoever ends up winning, people are going to be rushing back to the game after the game is over because the game should end like 30 minutes before the content drop unless it goes to like penalties or whatever. Um, and then people are going to be ready for Sunday content. I think whoever does win the World Cup today, we've seen this multiple times, right? After a game, maybe for the quarterfinals or for the semifinals, some of the cards from the nation that ends up winning end up having a bit of a bounce in price. Like let's say Argentina win today. I think your uh, Lissandro Martinez cards from the Phenoms, right? That card might continue to rise back up a little bit. Maybe some French cards would rise up. Um, some of the most popular ones in the game that is they might rise up a little bit because people would go and make squads using the players that they just watched in the World Cup to go and you know play some FIFA, right? That would be the hype on FIFA because people watch the real life football, then they come on to FIFA to try to emulate that, right? It's just like after Giroud scored for France in the semifinal, I think it was, uh, or maybe it was either the semifinal or the quarterfinal where Giroud scored and I, I went to the market and I bought his World Cup Stories card, even though this is not a live item. He was like 55,000 coins. An hour after the game, he was up at like 63K, right? Because people just wanted to use this card because they saw him perform in real life. And there's that connection there. So watch out for the market. I think you'll see some price movements during the game, but also after the game as well. Now, speaking of what content could be today on a Sunday, of course, we're expecting more team of the tournament cards in packs. And I mean, we don't really have that many that we're expecting to see today. I mean, we actually do. That's not true. We have five cards that have been leaked. We've got an Amrabat. We have a Casemiro uh, that have been leaked. We have a Bruno Fernandez, a Doan, um, Japanese right mid, and an Otamendi. So, I honestly, I think that five cards in a mini release seems like a lot. I really don't know if Bruno Fernandez is going to be getting one. We will see. But Casemiro, Bruno Fernandez, Amrabat, Doan, and Otamendi are the, the mini release cards that have not been put out yet. So we'll see if EA drop all five of those today or if there's any surprises or if they uh, maybe don't drop one of those and maybe one of those was an incorrect leak. So besides the mini release today, though, I at least of right now, I'm not expecting too much else. Uh, EA has been again, they've been a bit confusing with what they've been doing right now on the game in terms of content. We've had all these packs that have been added to the code, right? Like there's that mid-season number two review pack. Um, there was a couple other packs that we saw, we thought we were going to see in the store. We have not seen those. EA did release the winter warm-up and the winter recruits pack, which we'll talk about this recruits pack in a second, but EA is kind of being confusing again with the content. So, I mean, today it, it might be a pretty quiet day. I would assume that they would drop a halftime SBC for the um, World Cup final, that's for sure. And then the only other thing that's kind of just out there in my mind is, you know, I think back to FIFA 18, and I don't think this would be today, but I would absolutely love it. I think all of us would love it if EA brought this concept back. Remember in FIFA 18, they released a full squad of French players, literally the full, the full French team. They gave them promo cards uh, for winning the World Cup with some nice boosts. Now, again, this is completely different time frame in the year. This was at the end of FIFA, that cycle in FIFA 18. Right now, we're smack dab in the middle in December of FIFA 23. But if there's any sort of like man of the match or recognition for whoever ends up winning the World Cup today in terms of cards on the market, I think that'd be fantastic. So I would love to see EA do something along these lines. But based off of how they've been doing things, I don't expect it. Uh, but man, you, you guys remember some of these cards, right? The 97 Mbappe. Look how young he looks, bro. Absolutely insane. Uh, the 98 Griezmann, Matuidi, uh, the Varan card, the Yoris, like there were so many great cards, Kimpembe back in the day, uh, Usman, right? So there were so many great cards back from those releases. Hopefully EA at least recognized the winners of the World Cup from today's game in some way, shape, or form, um, whether it's Man of the Match cards or something on the game. I hope they do something in the next couple days uh, regarding those winners. But, you know, the content today, again, mini release, I don't know if I would expect too much more. Maybe a one-off SBC player. This Gutsa card that dropped yesterday was a little bit of a surprise. Uh, I have a couple thoughts about this Gutsa, actually. It's not a bad SBC by any means. And it kind of shows us that EA is on a new kick. They are, kind of have a new trend this year in FIFA 23. This Gutsa got a really nice boost, right? And it's really cheap. Like I said, 38,000 coins to do this. And it's a big boost, right? Plus 17 pace, plus 10 shooting. He's four star, four star as his original card uh, was also four star, four star. I think some people wanted the five star skills on Gutsa. That would have been really fun. But I mean, 
38,000 coins EA this year have seemed to be dropping really, really cheap SBCs. They give the players maybe a little bit smaller of upgrades, but they're dropping very cheap SBC players. We've had many of them in the past couple of weeks. Um, you know, just kind of like randomly dropped, not that expensive. And I think what it really does is it allows the casuals to do these SBCs for really, really cheap prices to get them done really easy. And they're putting out some nice names and they're putting out some decent cards. So for us hardcores, you look at these SBCs and you're like, man, Nate, these SBCs like don't do anything for us. Like how, how is that cool? You're going to look at that card and say that it's cool, but I mean, for the price, you, you can't really complain too much when it's 30,000 coins. I'm trying to find a couple examples of other SBCs recently that we have had. Maybe I'll just have to go uh, into the SBC tab here for a second and try to find them. But like, you know, there's been some decent ones recently. Uh, even the dynamic duos, right? Those guys have been really, really cheap. Some of the showdowns have been really cheap, like like the Orsich, right? We should be getting an Orsich upgrade today. His card is probably going to look like this. That would be insane. They've been upgrading these showdown cards pretty fast. So hopefully they do that and then upgrade the uh, final winners uh, showdowns today on the game as well. But that's kind of how I feel about these like this Gutsa SBC, the, the Orsich and, and even some of the other showdowns that we have had. They've been pretty cheap and it just seems like EA this year is prioritizing putting out cool player SBCs that are just different with maybe not the most insane upgrades and the most insane players, but just fun cards and they're making them pretty cheap. Vlahovic is another one, right? That's another card I could shout. Gonzalo Ramos, uh, some of these other SBCs that have been pretty cheap and fun cards. So that just seems to be something that EA are doing this year. Um, and I guess that's just because they want to either allow more people to drain their clubs of fodder and of coins with these kind of cheaper SBCs for cards that are kind of hit you in the feels, right? And they give out some nice upgrades for them, but they don't make them super meta that everybody wants to go out and do them. So that's kind of an interesting thing that I've noticed um, on the game this year. But speaking of the market in general, I want to talk about a couple of things heading into uh, today on Sunday and even looking into Monday. Like I said, and as we talked about in the store yesterday, they dropped that tradable. This might have been on Friday night as well. Um, I might have missed it on Friday night because I recorded the video early into Saturday. But uh, the 37.5K pack is back again. And as we saw last week, that brought a lot of supply to the promo cards that were in packs. And, you know, I think it was it's pretty pretty um, accurate to say that some of the promo cards took a hit in price yesterday because of this extra supply. I mean, Harry Kane was like over 200,000 coins all day yesterday, and right now he's in the mid 180s. Uh, Foden is like low 300s. Diego Dalo was like down into the 170s. Teo Hernandez is down, and there's so many guys in this promo team that are so cheap, and I think it's just because this promo team lacks a little bit of hype, but there's still some cool cards in here. Uh, but the supply just keeps coming in. Gavi is 22K. Gavardiol, 54. Dumfries, 45K. Tiago Silva's 45,000 coins, right? There's a lot of great cards in this promo team that are very, very cheap. And if you take a look at the market, you, you see that constant supply coming in. And I really think you can point a finger towards that pack in the store, that 37K pack. Is that's really a big culprit. I know I know that maybe a lot of you guys have opened that pack and you haven't gotten anything sick from it, but I really do feel like that pack is supplying promo cards throughout this week and it did last week as well, a little bit extra. So that makes me feel like these promo cards are probably not going to be their cheapest uh, today on Sunday. We've seen that in the past couple of weeks where cards get really cheap on um, like Sundays and Mondays, and then they end up rising up. Like Road to the World Cups, I believe, did that. The Stories players did that a decent amount. Even some of the Phenoms last week were very cheap on Sunday and rose into the Monday-Tuesday time frame. I think with these cards this week, that still could happen, but I think later on in the week still, and you think about Winter Wild Cards, we already have our first player leaked for Winter Wild Cards. I do believe that with that store supply being there, uh, you'll see these cards drop off more today in the short term, but then even in the long term, I think if I would wanted to buy any of these for my team, I would still be waiting it out until hopefully later in the week this week before trying to pull a trigger on any of any of those uh, to put it in my squad and spend the coin. So that is personally what I'd be doing and waiting on that, especially with the SBC that could potentially be coming tomorrow on Monday. And that is what I want to take a look at next and talk through because I think there's an investment potential here, especially on the SBC fodder market. The 88 plus mid or World Cup icon pack. Now, is this guaranteed to be a pack that's an SBC? No, it's not. But Mondays, right? 
all we have to say are Mondays. We know what we get on Mondays. We get the upgrade packs. Now, one thing I want to point out about Icon SBCs this year, they've all been a bit more expensive. The Max 86 Icon was 144K, Base Icon 230, and then both of the 87 plus base or mids that we have had have been 250,000 coins plus. And if you compare that to some of the hero upgrade packs, I mean, shoot, we had a hero upgrade pack that was 75K, right? Some other ones like the 86 plus were on like 100 to 140,000 coins. The last hero pack that we had, the, um, the World Cup hero pack by itself, that was a, a pretty nice valued SBC as well, like 120,000 coins. It seems like EA make the icon upgrades more expensive, but since we have the opportunity to pack those World Cup icons, uh, I think a lot of people are going to want to do this uh, SBC if it's an SBC when it is dropped. But um, I just think this opens up a really good potential to invest in SBC fodder once again. And if you look at, at these prices and what these 87 plus base or mid icons, the most recent two SBCs, have required a lot of. I think they were both 84, 85, and 87 rated squads for both of these SBCs. And you guys remember um, how the fodder market moved when these were dropped, right? A lot of your 85s moved, a lot of your 86s moved, but that 87 rated squad it actually does make your higher tier fodder go up in price. So if I'm taking a look at fodder right now and trying to figure out what's the best rating to invest in, obviously, as we always do, it's best practice to do a club stock everywhere. I think it's a good practice to get some 84s at like 2.3K. 85s at 7,000 coins, that's fantastic, right? 86 is at 12k fantastic 87s try to get like 18 or below 88s i try to get 26 89s 36 37 and then like the 91s i try to get about 52k if you can as well but i'm even going to start doing it on this video right now because i've been lacking lately on my club stocks i talk about them but i don't even go ahead and do them um I, I don't, and i need to right but i do really feel like these cards today with squad battle rewards that could actually push a little bit of supply to the market today and it could make the market rebound a little bit as well in some areas some of your gold cards maybe rise up a little bit in price today and some of the rest of the market if we're just talking on a very short-term flipping opportunity some cards rose up yesterday but not that much uh, today could be another day where you see some of those cards just slightly rise so what i'm going to do right here is try to pick up a couple of these just i just start from the top with the highest rated cards like boom i'll pick up a couple of those right around 51 52 I actually don't think that bid went through, but you know, th this is what I'm trying to do here. Go through these higher rateds and I'm going to go all the way down through the lower rateds and put a couple in the club. And at the very least, I'll be able to do the SBC if I want to um, tomorrow on Monday for a little bit cheaper. Let me just bid this De Bruyne up to 50K. Hopefully we win the bid and we'll see where that goes. But I do think, like I said, that the squad battle rewards today on the game will help uh, push a little supply on the market where you could have a great entrance period into fodder. Now, what we've seen the past couple weeks is Mondays, people go out and invest on fodder big time on Mondays. So you have, you have to get in early. And I think today would be a really good day to get in early on the fodder with that supply from squad battle rewards and uh, just being ahead of the curve a little bit. Uh, I think that getting on the bids or the snipes is a fantastic, fantastic opportunity here. Now, of course, it, it all it all depends, and that's that's the bottom line of SBC fodder investing. And we needed to say this because last week fodder did okay, but it it didn't do that amazing, right? Other weeks it's done amazing. It all depends on the hype level of the SBC that is dropped, right? Last week the 87s did fantastic. The 88s went down because they were overinvested and not required. That's why I always recommend doing a club stock because um, you know, you'll see those prices rise on Monday and then after the SBC drops, maybe some other ones will continue to go. You can sell those cards then. But if you do a club stock and you're covered on all bases, you know, at some point all cards on fodder are going to go up, right? Some some weeks 91s go up a lot, some weeks 84s go up a lot, right? 91s have not done that well. Last week they were like 57k, 58k, but you know, it it all just comes down to the requirements of the SBC, so it's more of a waiting game, right? We've got winter wild cards that is upcoming. We've got our first card that is leaked. There's going to be a lot of great SBCs coming in the next couple weeks as well. If, if fodder does not go up that much this week, it's probably something that we just keep in our clubs and wait until it rises a little bit later on when more SBCs drop. Now, speaking of that Winter Wild Cards leak, I think it's worth talking about because this is early, right? Very early. I mean, on a Saturday, Foot Sheriff is leaking the first card for the promo that's coming six days from then. Uh, that's pretty crazy, but it's a big name. Alan St. Maximin, first promo card for him uh, on the year, I believe. 
Um, I don't think he's gotten in for him yet this year, but an Alan St. Maximin card is one that people get very, very excited about um, every single year because he's got the five-star skills. He's got the four-star weak foot this year. I mean, this guy was 40K at the start of the year this year, 40,000 coins. Now he's 2K, uh, but he's just French. He's meta. And, you know, seeing this leak right off the bat is like, okay, Winter Wild Cards looks like it's going to be what it was last year. And that was insane and hype because they put a lot of great players out and they put, um, you know, a lot of hype players out too. So, um, so you see some people in the comments saying that Bruno Guimaraes was flying up in price. So, uh, you know, people kind of probably knew that that Alan St. Maximin leak was coming with the Newcastle links. But keep an eye out on the leaks because those could continue to come out on Twitter and throughout the uh, interwebs here today. And that could be potential um, you know, whether to make coins off of that or just to kind of see the vibes of what EA is going to be doing with this next Winter Wild Cards promo. That's what I'll be watching out for. So continue to watch the market today as well. Like I said, I think your team and tournament cards will be flippable. Not many of them did that great yesterday, uh, but I think some of them could do a little bit today. I'm actually getting some really good lazy sales. Like I bought Kane at 180 and I lazy sold him at 217. That was kind of crazy. And I'm just noticing that, yes, these cards are not the most hyped, but a lot of people are going out and trying them. So so, you know, getting the lazy sales on those is very, very nice. I do expect those cards to drop off a bit more today. Maybe some of your gold cards um, could rise up a little bit. I mean, I was expecting the market to drop off a little bit more yesterday than it did. It really was pretty stagnant, um, except for the cards and packs, of course. But overall, the market was pretty stagnant. So maybe we'll see a slight rise today, but I'm not expecting anything super crazy. Maybe we'll trade with some golds and maybe I'll just chill with it. Because again, what we, what we talked about yesterday and what we talked about the past couple days is that the premise behind people selling all their cards last week and, you know, just kind of this scared uh, aspect of people on the market with winter wild cards upcoming and the, the big content rush that it's going to bring, I still feel like that is there. And if we start to get more winter wild cards leaks, that is only going to be amplified. That, I guess, uh, scaredness is only going to become more of a reality for people on this game. So watch the market today. World Cup final. It's going to be an absolutely insane game. Uh, and hopefully, just for the day of the sport, it's going to be a really, really awesome day for the world of football. And of course, the World Cup is ending, which is a little bit sad. It's been a great month. And uh, we look forward to maybe some last couple promo cards from Team of the Tournament dropping on the game today as well. So if you enjoyed today's video, smash thumbs up on it, comment down below if you have any questions, and subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate to put a count. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.